Right, class, thank you for joining me once again, where people continue to be wrong on the interwebs. It's incredible, isn't it? Today's willing contestant is one Lane Norton, a PhD, apparently, to he, in nutrition science in some way, although I fail to see how you can hold a PhD in um, any aspect of science, actually, and get basic fundamental first principles of science wrong, as we're about to see here in this wildly amusing little trietsy into the world of Lane Norton and his calories in, calories out, insanity, his madness around this topic. Um, yeah, buckle in, pay attention, stop throwing paper, paper darts. Um, get rid of that gum, sit up straight, fold your arms, cross your legs, pay attention, and be ready to be wildly amused by Lane Norton's sheer um, lack, really. The sheer lack. The boy is destitute, he really is. Um, anyway, here is his classic video on his on the front page of his channel, actually. It's still up there, even though it's been debunked, I don't know how many times by all sorts of sensible commentators, including myself, on about three different occasions in three different formats for three different YouTube channels. Still remains up there. The boy doesn't seem to learn uh, or, 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 um, or copper hint. Anyway, let's go through it again for you. Uh, here he is uh, critiquing a woman who made a video suggesting that calories in, calories out is an oversimplification of physiology. She's right, it is. Well, it's not just an oversimplification, it's just wrong. It doesn't work for reasons we'll talk about during this video. And also that calories in, calories out is bro science at best. And, and Lane doesn't agree with that. Lane thinks calories in, calories out is good stuff and real science in some way. And here's his attempt at, here's his attempt at telling us how it's real science. Off you go, Lane. Oh, good, good. More complicated than that. It's actually not. It actually it really is. If you look at the tightly controlled metabolic ward studies, when they- Okay, we'll cite one lane. Any one at all. Any tightly controlled metabolic ward lock-in study over any decent period of time with properly randomized, properly equated uh, subpopulations at baseline, i.e. genetically identical twins, who were separated at birth, locked in separate labs, have no confounding covariates or, or any of those kind of things going on whatsoever, a properly controlled scientific experimental study, then you've got something to talk about. Otherwise, you're just waffling, and I noticed that you didn't actually cite any well-controlled metabolic ward lock-in studies. You just want to make a statement, which you're about to make, um, which doesn't therefore hold any water because it's not a statement of fact, it's your opinion. Okay, good. Off you go, though. They assess people's energy expenditure. And no, they don't. How do you assess somebody's energy expenditure, Lane? Do you keep them locked in a huge bomb calorimeter? 24 hours a day, seven days a week for a decent period of time to make sure you've got tenure for your study? No? No good then. There'll be an error. There'll be large errors in the estimation of energy expenditure. Sorry about that. And then they precisely control their intake. No, they don't. How do you precisely control someone's intake of energy if you're going to measure it using calories? How do you do that, Lane? Even in a laboratory, even with highly technical research equipment worth millions of dollars, how do you do that? It hasn't been done, Lane. You're making things up here. That's why you haven't cited a study that's done any of this, because there aren't any. Okay? Simple. They lose or gain almost the exact amount of weight that is predicted. Yeah, see, science lane is litigated empirically. That means with numbers. I know it's a big word lane. It means numbers. See how you didn't give us any numbers there at all? You gave us your opinion. Almost exactly is what you said. That's not a number lane. We, we need numbers if you want to tell us about science. And also, it might be a good idea if you cite the science that you got the numbers from. You've done neither of those things, so we can now dismiss this opinion. And let's move on to the next bit, because it's the best bit of the whole video. I can't wait. People say, well, we're not bomb kilometers. There you go. We're not bomb calorimeters. So you clearly do understand this, at least to that degree. No, we're not. But we kind 
are. No, number one, keep your voice below the threshold of pain. Thank you, Lane, if you don't mind. Uh, number two, we are nothing like a bomb calorimeter. A bomb calorimeter is a closed thermodynamic system, and human beings are open thermodynamic systems. So on the very most fundamental level in terms of thermodynamic process, we are entirely unlike. We are nothing like a bomb calorimeter. <laughs> Dear idea. Uh, I'm laughing because it's going to get even better soon. Hold on to your seats, boys and girls. Because here's the thing. There's this thing called the first law of thermodynamics. Yes, the first law of thermodynamics, which does not apply to open thermodynamic systems. But we'll get to that in a minute, because let's let him say this, because it's so funny. Which states that matter cannot be created or destroyed, only transferred in form. Okay, Lane. <laughs> Lane, 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 lane. No, it doesn't say that. It doesn't say anything remotely similar to, to that. <laughs> oh, my word. Lane, matter is not conserved. Okay? If you doubt me on that, just go and interview uh, anybody who may be alive still who was in Hiroshima, Japan, on the morning of the 6th of August, 1945, and ask them whether or not Lane mass is conserved. Uh, you could also ask Einstein whether mass is conserved, or you could ask him if he was still living. He isn't anymore. Perhaps you should read his paper where he indicated um, words to the effect of, although he never actually said this, he, he indicated words to the effect of, and mathematics to the effect of, actually, empirical science, that E is equal to mc squared, meaning that mass is actually a form of energy in a condensed sort of a form, and it's transferable in that form, and as such, matter is not conserved, <laughs> you buffoon. Uh, I'll give you another example of how matter is not conserved, if you like. Uh, perhaps you'd like to go and visit the people who run the Slack Center, or perhaps the Large Hadron Collider research teams. <laughs> Lane and anyone that works there will also tell you that matter is not conserved because they take small amounts of matter and they accelerate it up to near the speed of light and interact it with other streams of matter and what they usually get out of such so-called collisions or interactions between these matter uh, particles is sometimes 30,000 times what they put in. Matter is created out of nowhere from becoming condensed out of pure energy, the energy of kinetic movement at near the speed of light, for example. <laughs> matter is, matter is uh, conserved, says Lane Norton. No, it isn't, son. And the first law of thermodynamics doesn't say that it does. What does the first law of thermodynamics say, by the way? Well, basically it says that the change in internal energy of a system is equal to the uh, quantity of energy supplied to the system as heat minus the work done by that system, where the internal energy of the system seems to refer to that energy required to set that system up in its current state ready for the undertaking of such work, having a certain amount of heat added to it. Nothing to do with conservation of matter whatsoever. Um, also, the mathematics supplied there in the first law of thermodynamics, the change in internal energy is equal to the energy added in heat minus the work done, that is. Um, that applies only and is, it is um, caveated to apply specifically to a closed thermodynamic system, such as, for example, a bomb calorimeter. A human being is an open thermodynamic system, allowing the flow of matter in and out as well as energy, thus invalidating the use of the first law of thermodynamics as being remotely applicable to the situation of a human being and their energy balance requirements from food or the amount of physical work they do in the universe or indeed the amount of heat that they either produce or consume which by the way humans consume exactly no heat at all we we don't consume heat and use that for metabolic process 
Uh, our energy is in the chemical form. It's in a potential form. It's in the form of uh, ATP that we generate from um, supplying, reducing equivalents, cleaved off carbohydrates and fats mostly, and supplying those to the electron transport chain in the mitochondria in a controlled um, way such as to react that with oxygen and produce the energy required to produce the chemical substance ATP from ADP plus PI and thus store some potential energy for later use. Uh, that's got nothing to do with heat whatsoever. Some heat is actually released in that process because it's not particularly efficient, uh, but that doesn't apply to anything to do with the first law of thermodynamics because we're not a closed system lane. Okay, so no, the, the first law of thermodynamics does not state that matter is, is uh, conserved because it isn't, uh, and neither does it say anything about the uh, human energy balance requirements uh, because humans are open systems and not closed. So there it is. There it is. All right. Well, it's been fun. I hope you've enjoyed this little trip down Crazy Lane with Lane Norton, a PhD in getting it by a badly, badly wrong and clearly not having the first clue or understanding whatever of thermodynamics or first principles of science or physics or pretty much anything else, actually. Um, he also probably should be awarded a PhD in arrogance which is a form of inappropriate self-confidence. A lot of people say I'm arrogant, but I'm not because arrogance has the caveat of inappropriate self-confidence. I'm confident in my abilities to get it right because I do, uh, unlike Lane Norton, who does not clearly. Absolutely unbelievable, Lane. And by the way, I say it every time, and I'll mention it once again, you really are an absolute coward son because... You've been um, challenged by myself and many others as well to come and front me for a debate on this topic, and you're still failing to do so. I wonder why. I wonder why Lane Norton lacks the courage to confront the fact that he's going to be torn seven new orifices by me on any occasion that he does actually front up for a debate on the topic of thermodynamics or physics, or science, or nutrition, or anything remotely similar to any of those topics. <laughs> All right, join me next time, boys and girls, when somebody else will be wrong on the interwebs, because there are plenty of examples of people who spend a vast amount of time being very, very wrong on the interwebs, and it's my pleasure to point it out to you. I'll see you then. Ciao for now. <laughs>